The name Seidler is synonymous with Australian architecture and is associated around the world with modernism, major artwork commissions and city shaping. For almost six decades, Harry and Penelope Seidler worked together to design some of our nation's most successful residential, commercial and public buildings and in doing so evolved our modern architectural identity, reinvented the centres of our cities and reimagined how Australians live and work. Born in Vienna in 1923, Harry endured many forced movements as a child during World War II before studying architecture in Canada. Time at Harvard University followed with Harry's early influences and teachers reading like a who's who of celebrated architects and artists, Walter Gropius, Joseph Albers, Marcel Breuer and Oscar Niemeyer among them. Lured to Australia after his immigrant parents commissioned him to design their home, Harry arrived in Sydney in 1948 with no intention of staying long term. But he was stunningly successful from the outset. In 1950, Rose Seidler House in Warringah was the first completely modern residence to fully express the Bauhaus philosophy in Australia. Harry's innovative approach to domestic design responded to our informal lifestyles and desire for open, light-filled living. Rose Seidler House offered a radical rethink of housing, winning the Solman Award of 1951 and attracting an enthusiastic clientele. People were very interested in, in what he brought to Australia, the idea of modernism, straight from the Bauhaus, something completely unprecedented in terms of normal architectural practice in Australia. Harry fundamentally changed everyone's thinking about how far you could push modern architecture and he brought an international style to Australia. Penelope was 18 and studying liberal arts at the University of Sydney when she met the celebrated architect in 1957. They married a year later. Determined to immerse herself in Harry's world on an equal footing, Penelope switched to architecture, graduating in 1964. She joined Seidler and Associates that year as architect and later became a chartered accountant so that she could manage the practice finances. Artist Frank Stella once observed that Harry and Penelope functioned like synchronised swimmers, working collaboratively and harmoniously on each project. The family home, designed by the pair, Harry and Penelope Seidler House in Kalara, won the Royal Australian Institute of Architects Wilkinson Award in 1967. The couple found the rugged, sloped site in the bush, which Penelope later called an architect's block, and the Seidlers brought their vision to life. Attuned to its climate, the house demonstrated how concrete could be used skillfully to create a desirable home. As a house in the 60s, in many respects, it captured a shift away from the overlit houses of the 1950s to something warmer, more intimate, uh, more friendly. It was houses that we hadn't seen before. And of course, they were then replicated across suburbs because people really took to them. They took to the way of life that the houses brought to Sydney, as well as the architecture. So it was a kind of way of living, I think, and a lifestyle too, that uh, the Seidlers really brought to Sydney. Harry met Lendlease's Dick Dusseldorp in 1957 and went on to design several influential buildings, including Ithaca Gardens, Blues Point Tower, and what was once the nation's then tallest skyscraper, Australia Square. Australia Square was the world's tallest lightweight concrete building and was almost twice the height of its closest rival. Harry's design of consistently sized beams and panels enabled fast construction of one floor a week. It was the first commercial office tower to create a popular public plaza with shopping and food areas all in one. The award-winning tower demonstrated that architectural design excellence could be delivered alongside quick construction and commercial success. And boasting 100% occupancy to this day, Australia Square remains admired and relevant more than half a century after its construction. Two decades later, Seidler's design for Riverside Centre led pedestrians to the water's edge for the first time, reorienting Brisbane towards its river. 
I'd say that it was the transformation in terms of the social spaces that Seidler buildings um, create. Here, for example, that connectivity between the city streets seamlessly with the river's edge um, is just one example of how he has designed public spaces for the benefit of everyone in the community. Terry was fundamentally an internationalist, so he was never trying to do an Australian typology. I think what he did do was give Australia confidence that we didn't have to be looking for something parochial, and that was his really big contribution. Harry's architecture elevated Australia's cities to new heights. Harry and Penelope also showed Australians how art and architecture could intersect with carefully commissioned, site-specific artworks, like Alexander Calder's cross-blade sculpture at Australia Square and Frank Stella's cones and pillars in Grosvenor Place. Harry just and Penelope they had an eye, and I you know, just you could write a whole book about the art in their buildings. It was so strong and powerful, equal with the architecture. And a lot of architects look at art as sort of an afterthought, but Harry truly believed in the collaboration. Harry was able to actually bring artwork and, and encourage um, sculpture and, and encourage art in buildings. And it kind of set the scene for, for artists to actually to be included you know, in the urban fabric. Harry's 1990s award-winning Horizon Tower in Sydney was the first to demonstrate that Australian apartments could cater to high-end living. Harry received more than 50 awards during his lifetime, including five Solman medals and the gold medal of the Australian Institute of Architects. He was awarded the Queen's Royal Gold Medal from the Royal Institute of British Architects in 1996, made a Companion of the Order of Australia in 1987 and was awarded a British OBE. Harry also set new standards in how buildings were photographed in Australia. Following a stroke in 2005, Harry died in March 2006. His legacy includes more than 95 buildings around the world, each recognised for its unique design and innovative engineering. The coming together of the visual arts, the wonderful art commissions, the quality of the public spaces and so on, uh, it's, it's enormously enhanced the quality and sophistication of life in Australia. Throughout their almost five decades of married life, Penelope worked and innovated side by side with her husband and remains the director of Harry Seidler and Associates to this day. Penelope's contribution to architecture and the arts is both illustrious and indefatigable, supporting everything from the Biennale in Sydney to the Museum of Modern Art in New York. In 2008, Penelope was made a member of the Order of Australia for her work in the visual arts and architecture, and in 2011, was presented with the Chevalier of the Légion d'Honneur, France's highest decoration. In 2011, in an act of public philanthropy rarely seen in Australia, Penelope developed Harry's Park, a new green space at Sydney's Milsons Point that commemorates Harry's life and work. Today, Penelope's patronage and philanthropy continues to support the next generation of architects who, like her husband decades earlier, are looking to make their mark on Australia's cities. Ladies and gentlemen, please join the Property Council of Australia in honouring Mr Harry Seidler, AC, OBE, and Mrs Penelope Seidler, AM, 2019 inductees to the Australian Property Hall of Fame. To Harry and Penelope, my heartiest congratulations on this very well-deserved award. You have both significantly influenced both my life and the architectural life of Australia. Congratulations Penelope and Harry on this most deserved award and for your endless and passionate commitment to architecture and to never be mediocre. Well congratulations Harry Seidler, congratulations also to Penelope Seidler. The two of you have made such an extraordinary contribution to Australian architecture and urbanism, but also the idea of art patronage that this country I don't think has ever experienced a couple quite like you. Congratulations.